Hey, you guys. Hang tight for a sec. We are having some technical difficulties, so hold on. We're going to move the camera around. Flip it, hun. And then right here. Oh, um, you already had it right there. Right oh, I did? Okay. Hey, you guys. Hang on a sec. <laughs> we are having some technical difficulties this morning. Can you see me? Okay, hang, hang on, guys. I'm going to just bring this up on my laptop. So... I can see what is going on. So bear with me. Sam, are we chatting? Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys, hang on one more sec. I need to go to the original one and tell people um, that we are moving. So hang tight. <laughs> Just chat amongst yourselves. And... All right, so hopefully we just got everybody there. Um, no, I have water. I'm good, sweetie. You have a sip of okay. water. <clears throat> All right. I think we're almost there. Okay, good. I can see here. I can see here. So, um, oh my goodness, you guys. Goodness, goodness, goodness. I think we have some people here. We're going to just, you know, chit-chat for a second while we, um, while we find everyone else. <laughs> oh, heavens. Okay, I'm moving my laptop. Don't worry. I'm still here. I'm still here. If you guys could see it in here, it's just a... It's a nightmare. It, it's not a nightmare, but it's pretty... Uh, oh, goodness. It's pretty good. It's pretty crazy. Okay, friends, deep breath. How is everybody today? I'm so glad that you found me. And if you are still finding me, no worries. Um, oh, I'm going to turn on lights in a second. So, we are here today to talk about memory keeping in a traveler's notebook. So this is part four of what initially started out as just one free traveler's notebook class. You guys, that was almost a month ago. So we are well into this and um, I'm having fun. I hope you guys are having fun. I hear from a lot of you that you really look forward to these every Saturday and I have to be honest with you, I do too. It definitely gives me some, well, I, I have plenty going on, but um, gives me a lot to look forward to and a lot to think about during the week as I get things ready to um, talk about on Saturday. So um, if you are watching live, if you guys would do me a favor, uh, comment in the chat room. Let me know that you are here. Let me know your name and where you're from. I would also love to know if you um, have done memory keeping before. Some people also call that scrapbooking. Um, if you have been a scrapbooker for a while or memory keeper for a while, or if this is something that is new to you. If you guys would also please, please, please um, give the video a thumbs up. That um, really helps others to see the video. Um, and to, yes, Poe is here again. The cat is here again. And so is Sam. They're going to make an appearance again. So here we are. My helpers, Sam and Poe po. again. Yeah, Sam and Poe. So... Um, Sam is going to help me out again. Uh, he will be uh, reading any questions to me that I just can't see. I can't um, try to work and talk and then read comments at the same time and respond. So he will be responding to questions. I also, after the live video, will go back to the chat. And if there is anything that um, I missed, I will answer it in, um, in the comments. So. If at the end, if I also missed one of your questions or one of your comments, if you would go to the video, um, once it's done, you will be able to comment. So once all is said and done, if you remember to like, if you remember to comment on the video, and also if you would subscribe, that would mean the world to me. Okay, um, let's see if we have any more housekeeping items. Oh, I know. So I have put a ton of information in the description of the video. 
Um, I don't know if you can see it right now while we're live or not, but it is all there. There are a lot of things I'm going to talk about. I'm going to be talking about different printers that I use and different printables and different inks and different things like that. So, um, well, not really different inks, but it'll make sense when we get there. Any questions about anything that I'm using, I've tried to get everything in the description of the video. And if there's a question about something that I'm using that I don't see, I will go back after the video and add it there. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. We are going to flip the camera here. I'm gonna have Sam, my little AV helper, flip the camera and we're gonna turn the lights and we are going to get started. Make sure we're good. Let's, oh, that's so good, Sam. You're so good at the flipping. All right, uh, let's see, are we straight? We're kind of straight, let's get the lights on. Lights on. All right, let's see. Orientation is locked, um, it's fine. Okay, yeah, I think we're good, I think we're good. All right, let's move those lights in though, because we've got a bit of a shadow. Sammy, will you turn on off the overhead light, sweetie? Oh, all right, we're just about there. It is a beautiful Saturday morning here in Utah. Um, I don't know, I think it's supposed to be maybe like mid 60s today. It's yeah. supposed, it might rain. Oh, it might rain. Well, tomorrow it's definitely supposed to rain. Um, okay, can we see me? Here's my hands. Oh, there we go. All right, so you guys, let's talk memory keeping. Um, first of all, what is it? So memory keeping is really simple. It is basically um, taking photos and combining that with words to tell a story. Now, in some cases, you don't even need to have photos. Um, and we'll kind of talk about that. But memory keeping could be just keeping a journal or memory keeping could be um, you're travel using a traveler's notebook and making a list of your to-dos or making a list of things that you want to remember. So really, memory keeping is is kind of an all-encompassing um, an all-encompassing term. But I think in our kind of crafty community, when we talk about memory keeping, we're usually talking about combining the photos with the stories. Um, also scrapbooking. I learned probably four or five years ago when I started teaching Traveler's Notebook classes and teaching um, uh, planner classes that people that use planners and Traveler's Notebooks a lot of times don't want to be thought of as a scrapbooker. So memory keeping is kind of a good term that works for a lot of people. When I talk to younger um, folks, <laughs> younger folks, that makes me sound old right away, doesn't it? When I talk to younger folks about um, scrapbooking, they say, I don't scrapbook. I, um, I, I take my photos and I write little stories on them. And I'm like, oh, okay. I don't scrapbook. My grandma does that or my mom does that. And I just kind of chuckle and go, okay. You scrapbook. I, yeah, you scrapbook. Exactly. You scrapbook. All right. So that's basically what memory keeping is. Um, there is no right or wrong way to memory keep, you guys. And this is going to tie into the kind of statement that I have used, I think now in all of all four videos, and that is you do you. You define what memory keeping is to you. Um, my grandmother was a scrapbooker, and this goes way, way, way back to when she was a teenager. Um, and I have had the, um, the, you guys, it's funny when I um, when I'm doing the videos, I just completely lose my vocabulary entirely. I've had the good fortune to have her scrapbooks um, and to look through them. One of the things, though, that I notice, and if you have family members that are maybe a little bit older, you may have noticed the same thing that. Um, their scrapbooks generally have beautiful photos and they have the nice photo corners, but there's no writing with them. And that is why that whole kind of memory keeping concept of pairing the photo with the story is so important because I can look back at some of those photos and look at the beautiful photo and I may recognize my grandparents in the photo, but I might not recognize anyone else. And I wonder, my grandparents are no longer alive, so I can't go back and ask them. Who are those people? Why is everybody together? What were you doing? When was this? Where was this? And so forth. So that's where that um, pairing the photo and the words of the story really play together. Okay, so um, whether you are a scrapbooker, that it's been a scrapbooker memory keeper for a long time, or whether you're brand new to this, um, welcome. You're all the same because we're all approaching this from pretty much the same angle. I have been scrapbooking or memory keeping for 22, more than 22 years. 
uh, from the when I was pregnant with our first son. And my scrapbooking has evolved over the years. And I think for a lot of us that have kids that are now older, our scrapbooking has definitely evolved because our kids aren't around as much anymore. And so some of the things that we're taking photos of are really different than what we may have been taking photos of in, in the past and the stories that we have told in the past. So where my scrapbooking or memory keeping has evolved is into mini albums and then also into traveler's notebooks. And I'll kind of talk about um, why why that that um, evolution has taken place for me. So when it comes to using a traveler's notebook for memory keeping, as I kind of sat back and thought about the different um, the different ways that I use a traveler's notebook to scrapbook, I can kind of categorize those into three different um, buckets, if you will. And the first one would be generic. So these would be just generic. I have photos. Sam is eating breakfast. He has waffles and milk and, and a hash brown, and he's good. Um, I, he just brought that in. So if we missed a comment there, <laughs> um, we'll circle back, and he'll pick that one up. Anyhow, um, so the first bucket is kind of generic, and that's how some of my traveler's notebooks are when I am scrapbooking. They are just generic. So, for example, the one that we're looking at right here, and um, this is just generic photos that over the years I had added. I started this one in 2017 and just kind of did a little descriptor here in this pocket about what you would find inside, just different people, places, and things that, that um, you know, are important to me. This little thing right here, this is called a tip in. And this is a little peek into one of the things that I will cover next week in the fifth video. So um, hold on to that for a minute. So just as I start going, there's no rhyme or reason of what photos are in here. They really have nothing to do with each other. This one was talking about my morning routine with a cup of coffee. This one was a tree out, um, I think I took that out of the sunroof of my car um, at our old house. And so these were just things that in a lot of cases, if I was doing a 12 by 12 scrapbook page, I might not want to have a full 12 by 12 layout with a coffee cup, coffee cup talking about my morning routine. Now that's not to say that I couldn't do that, but um, for me personally, that is not something I would do. So a smaller canvas in a traveler's notebook um, kind of gives me a little bit more freedom to scrap some of those photos or do memory keeping about some of those photos that I might not um, document otherwise. Um, this little guy right here. So again, different ones, this, and this is a fun one, and I will actually, um, I am going to do, I think video six, is going to be a really, really, really deep dive into printing photos. We are gonna talk about the second half of class today about all the different kinds of photos you can print and some of the different printers that I use. But this one actually has a video embedded in it. So we'll kind of talk about that um, a little bit more in video or class six. Today we'll to talk about how to get, pardon? What's that app? Oh, that app. So this one, this uses a printer called LifePrint. And um, if you go to the first video, I actually show this in action. Um, what happens when you print the video, when you print the photo through the live print printer and then bring their app over the photo in the video place. Anyhow, I'll cover that more in video six, but this printer, the live print, for, the live print printer, as well as all the printers I'm going to talk about, I've included links to in the um, description of the video. So it'll be super easy for you to find. Um, we'll also today talk about how to print large photos like this um, a couple different ways, but I have a really easy way for you to do that um, if you're using a particular printer. Um, so again, just generic, different situations, different, um, different things that I wanted to remember. All right, the next one, and this is going to be something that's very similar. These are also very generic, and we'll take a deeper dive into some of, um, into, well, We'll take a deeper dive in a sec. So just kind of bookmark that in your brain. Um, more generics, and it depends on what I'm doing. So what you'll see here is most of these are going to be documented in a spread. So I might have a photo on one side and then journaling on the other side. Whereas these were more just kind of singles, single page, 
um, a little bit of journaling, but not telling as much of a story there. So um, lots of different formats. I, um, I'm always looking for different formats when I am doing my memory keeping in my traveler's notebook. And when I say formats, I mean, do I put two photos here and journaling here or six photos here and then some things over here? So one of the things that I've done, and I will dive into this um, for the sixth class, is I have in Instagram created a um, an album in Instagram where anytime I see someone's traveler's notebook, um, their little format that I like, I just pop that into the album. So when I'm creating for myself and I'm kind of um, have a brain cramp and I've lost my mojo and I can't quite figure out how I want to lay things out, that's a really good spot for me to kind of get inspired. So we'll talk about that more in video six. And you guys, who knows, eventually we could get to the point where I say, you know what, for video 134, we're going to be talking about I can talk a lot, you guys, but not that long. So um, we'll see how, how many videos we get through the process. Another, um, another just spread with a little tip in using some, um, uh, a little blah, 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 uh, acetate, whatever that is. You guys know what that is. Um, but just more spreads. So as I said, most of these are two pages and we're gonna dive in quite a bit into how to print those smaller photos. All right, so that those are just some examples of generics. So just doing some generic memory keeping in um, in a traveler's notebook. The next one. Yeah. What? Oh, oh, thanks, sweetie. You know what? Um, that I'm so you guys, Sam. Sam pulled up the app on his phone and was going to have me show you, but I think what we'll do. Appreciate that, but um, is we'll take a deep dive look at that on um. Next video. On the, yes, on video six. Yes, two videos from now. All right, so the next one is still generic, but, well, it's kind of generic. Do you find yourself, do you find you end up with too many filled notebooks? How do you find gotcha. them when you finish your memory key? Okay, them? great. So the question was, <laughs> do, you find your, do you find you end up with too many filled notebooks? How do you store them once you finish a memory keeping notebook? Um... I say to that, there is no such thing as too many. Kind of like shoes. <laughs> There's no such thing as too many. Um, so I, like I said, I've been a scrapbooker for 22 years. We moved about two years ago and I have boxes and boxes and boxes of albums. So for me, um, we have two boys. They, um, I think you got, you've met Sam. Um, our other son is in Washington state. He's a couple years older. That's Jack. Um, I'm pretty sure that when they get older, they're going to have zero interest in having any of those albums. So I will keep them for as long as I'm alive. And then if they have kids and they decide that they want them, they're more than happy to have them. But for me, it's part about doing the documenting. And for me, it's also part about the art or the creativity and the pleasure I get from that. So when it comes to how I store them, um, I have lots of these and I have lots of traveler's notebooks. So in some cases, I will just store them like in my traveler's notebooks, my extra traveler's notebooks that I have, or I'll even take um, one of the photo boxes that you can buy from like a big box store and um, I'll store them in the photo boxes. So they just kind of, you know, go wherever they decide they want to go. All righty. How do you stay in chronological order and then the links aren't in the description? Oh, the links aren't in this description. All no, right. No, so but, I, I, and I, I was going to try and comment that, but um, it's, you, I can't comment. They're not there. Okay, you guys. So um, I will, this, I tried to paste them in and they probably didn't get pasted in when we had to move to the second video. So um, I will paste all of those things in. Actually, you know what, Sammy, you can do that for me. I, um, you can do it from this computer. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so Sam will, Sam will um, pop those in for us. So, oh, the question was, so um, Sam, let me show you where you need to go. I know how to do this. I, was, I got it up online. Because, but uh, do, do you know where I have all the yes, description stuff? Okay. Exactly where you, I'm just going to go to the other YouTube one. Oh, okay. All right. So there's the teenager for you. <laughs> Thank you, sweetie. I love you, um, Mom. Yeah, I love you too, Sammy. Um, oh, do I do chronological? I do not. 
and that's just my personal preference. I um, I have never been a chronological scrapbooker. When I am doing my memory keeping, it's usually either a photo speaks to me and I want to document right then, or product speaks to me and then I want to use that product so I'll go find a photo that I want to use with it. So no right or wrong way. Um, I know some people very much like to stay chronological, so that's another kind of you do you. So as we were talking about generic, this is another kind of generic, but it has a little bit of a theme to it. This um, this is something I started doing, I wanna say uh, probably about a month ago, right before the whole coronavirus thing started. I travel quite a bit normally um, for my mail, my mail business teaching. And I teach um, all over the US and Canada. Um, I've done been to some, you guys, amazing, amazing places. South Africa and all over Europe and Australia and it's this this job when people ask me what I do and I talk to them about the travel they kind of their jaw drops especially if they don't even know what scrapbooking is um I travel a lot so my favorite place to sit on an airplane is in the window well not in the window at the window and we, we, so we, we got it you got it yep you, okay, you, um, so now it sounds like all of the description, all those links are now in the description. Thank you, Sammy. Um, anyhow, I like to sit at the window and I like to look out the window and I like to take pictures out the window. So something like this, still pretty generic, but it has more of a theme to it. And I, this is my little traveler's notebook where I'm documenting the view out the window for my travels so far this year. And then those stopped pretty abruptly. Um, they stopped pretty abruptly right here. So because I'm still documenting, I can document when I'm not traveling too. And that was the whole idea here. I'm going from Salt Lake, where I live, to nowhere. Um, one thing I want to mention about this. If you notice, I have the exact same format and design throughout this entire Traveler's Notebook. And the idea behind that for me was I wanted consistency because I wanted to focus on that view out the window. So sometimes I think we get so caught up in how do I make it look different? Everything needs to look a bit different. It doesn't have to. This project is so easy for me to do now. This one right here took me about 10 minutes to do because all I had to do was go online and find a photo of a bunch of airplanes grounded. And then I had my format already done. So I did my stamping and then did a little, my, little bit of my journaling. Here's a little tip that if you are doing something like this, where you have um, the same format in the entire album, do yourself a favor and create a little, um, like a little template. So this was my template as I was kind of playing around trying to decide what I wanted to, the format that I wanted. Once I kind of set on that, I know exactly where, how many on my little misty, how many little squares up and in, where I'm stamping, um, my journaling here, these are the stamps I've used, the size of photo and everything. So literally, eventually, when I do start traveling again, whenever that is, it could be months from now. So I may come back to this project after I take that trip and have my photo out the airplane window and be all ready to go and then go, oh my gosh, where do I even start? I don't remember. If I've got my little template there, it makes it super easy for me. Sammy, will you do me a favor? Will you put the comments back up on my laptop so I can see them? They're not up. Nope. Oh. All right. So this next part is where we're going to spend um, the majority of our time. Well, actually, the rest of our time. We're going to be talking about... Are the dates and city code stamps. Ah, yes. The dates and city codes there are stamps. I have linked in the description of the video. Um, these are stamps from Carrie Bradford Studio. Um, you guys, Carrie Bradford in my book is a, is just a goddess. She's a genius. Um, it's like every time I see anything that she does, it's like she lives in my little brain and knows what I want before I even know what I want. Um, I have been collecting her stamps uh, for years. Um, the one thing to know about her stamps is she is small business. She's located here in Utah. Um, she does a run on stamps, and for most most of the time, she won't do reruns. So once they're gone, they're gone. If something is super popular, she will do reprints. Um, 
So if you go to her website, and I've linked that in the description, and you like what you see, I highly recommend that you subscribe to her, um, just to her website or to her blog. If you follow her on Instagram, just so every time she does new releases, you know, and then you kind of have, you know, you can then go see if you want to buy the stamps or not. Um, a lot of her stamps sell out very quickly. She do, She does still have some of these block stamps, but um, I think numbers maybe, I can't remember. Anyhow, um, also because it's coronavirus, I've talked to her because so many of you have asked me about these stamps. Um, because of the coronavirus, her supplier is having a hard time getting the supplies to make some of the, the rubber or whatever it is they use the, um, for the stamps. Anyhow, um, so after this is all over, she may be able to go back and do some reorders and some stamps, but um, follow her. And I have no association with her. I was on her design team years ago. Um, I just, she's a wonderful person and I like to use a product and share the love. Okay, so um, we are now talking about um, how I mostly use my traveler's notebooks and these are for trips or events. To me, a traveler's notebook is kind of like a mini book. And I do a lot of mini book projects because that's where they really um, kind of fit in with my um, my type of scrapbooking these days. Uh, if I go on a trip, I'll sometimes we'll use a mini book to document that or my traveler's notebook. So um, for me, they have a, a very definitive start and an end. I think I just saw a comment that there are any discount codes with any of the sites listed. Um, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, I would suggest if you see something that you like, Google discount code for whatever that is, and then um, you may find one. Yes, Emmy. The block stamps is out of stock. The block stamps. So mm -hmm. um, there, I know she has, I think yesterday when I looked, there are a few different block stamps that she may still have different styles. The other thing that I would recommend, if you are interested in one of those block stamps and they're out of stock, a messenger on our website and just say, hey, you know what, I really like this. Is there any chance she'll be getting it back in? And if she has enough people, um, you know, obviously outside of this as well, that say they want it, then she may be able to um, reorder at one point. Okie dokie. So um, this is one of the hard things, you guys, about a live. I'll get on a tangent and then come back and circle back. So, but lives are fun. Okay, so we're talking about a, a project or a trip, and that's mostly what I use my traveler's notebooks for. So this first one that we're going to take a look at, this one has to do with a little road trip that I took with my friend, Vicki Booten. She um, was in town last summer, and I wanted to show um, her part of the beautiful state of Utah that I live in. And so we took a road trip to Bryce Canyon. You don't live near Bryce Canyon, Lil. Pardon? You don't live by Bryce. Well, Sammy, we took a road trip. Bryce is like four hours away. Hey, no comments from the peanut gallery, pal. <laughs> you can comment. He's silly, silly boy. Thinks he knows more than his mama does. You, you said like the beautiful part of Utah we live in. I'm like, the beautiful state of Utah Bryce. that we live in. All right, anyhow. So, um... I did a video and I'm pretty sure that I included the link in the description about how I prepare for um, documenting a, um, a trip like this. And it all starts- Well, they're enjoying me. Oh, I bet they're enjoying you, I know, right? You guys come to see Sam and hear Sam's antics as much as you do me, or even, I don't know, maybe even more me. And then I know some of you are only here to see Poe the cat. Um, and that's, that's good, I don't care why you're here as long as we're here, right? As long as we're having fun. All right, so um, I did a video about how to prepare for documenting a trip, and I have linked that in the description, but this is just kind of a quick preview as to what that is. So anytime I go on a trip, um, I start out with a bag, and I'll, sometimes I'll take a bag with me. Other times I will grab it from the first place I'm buying something. As you look in there, this bag is full of all kinds of memorabilia. This is all stuff that I gather when I'm on a trip. And there, these are little um, metal coins from the park ranger station, um, just all of the little uh, brochures and trail maps, um, even receipts. 
you guys, I grab everything. I buy postcards a lot um, because postcards are fun to add into your traveler's notebooks. We'll talk about um, that in the sixth, fifth, fifth next week video. But as you can see, you guys, so much stuff and Sam's just going through all of this. Um, one of the things though, you don't have to just, pardon? Can I have this? Sam would like to have this one. So I guess Sam is gonna have this one, you bet. Good thing this, I bought this, a bunch of stickers while I was there. This going on my laptop. Okay, that can go on your laptop. Um, see, Sam's gonna be a scrapbooker too. Absolutely You guys, not. even, he said absolutely not. Well, little does he know, he already does it. I even grab brochures like this because you never know when you might wanna cut something out from a brochure or maps, all different kinds of things. So even though I don't even know what I'm going to do with these things when I'm collecting, I still grab them because I might want to use them. This was a map um, that I cut up. Sometimes I'll even grab two of the free brochures or three because really I don't know well, what I might do with they're them. They're free. Well, they are, two or three. Well, I know, but Sam, you don't wanna just take a bunch because they're free. Um, anyhow, so all of that goes in the bag throughout the trip and having a bag like that um, really helps to make sure that all of your things stay together. I do that um, when I travel to Europe. Um, really doesn't matter where I go. Um, well, if I go to the grocery store, I don't do that. But well, and I don't go to the grocery store these days. So anyhow, I'm totally on a tangent now. Do yes. you use washi tape to add tips into Traveler's Notebooks? Um, the question was, do I use washi tape to add tip-ins to Traveler's Notebooks? I do, and we will um, talk about that. We'll show lots and lots of examples of how you can add different things into your Traveler's Notebooks. We'll do that in next Saturday, so week five. Um, that'll be a fun one, you guys. That'll be another live, and I will give you um, a list of things to bring, like paper and photos and um, postcards if you have them in washi, and we'll we'll play. All right, so what I've done here to decorate my pockets, these are all things that I collected, collected and cut out. So this is part of my memory keeping because I can take lots of photos, right? I took a ton of photos while I was there, but sometimes there are photos like that that you're going to see on that brochure that I will, well, I could try really hard, but it was summer, so I would never get snow on the photos, but it's, Mom, you're, you're a professional Photoshopper, though. Come on. Don't I'm a professional your, Photoshopper, don't doubt yes. Your skills, okay, man. thank you, sweetie. Um, anyhow, it's fun, I think, to have your, um, your photos, but also to have things like this. I always joke when I teach, um, when I teach classes, Disney classes, Disney scrapbook classes, that um, if you've ever tried to get a photo of Mickey Mouse by himself at Disneyland without 800 screaming kids hanging all over him, it's very hard to do. So I might have a few of those in one of my scrapbooks or traveler's notebooks, but I will also either have a postcard from the park or I will have a brochure that has Mickey on it that I will include, or I will even go to my most famous photographer friend out there, which is Google and I will find a really nice photo of Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse together, and I will um, save that photo, right click it, save it to my hard drive or my camera, and then print from there. All right, so lots of things that I tucked in the pockets, stickers, stamps, all kinds of things. I even, especially on it if it's on a trip, um, some of the little kitschy touristy pens that you find. This was um, a little touristy pen with Smokey the Bear. And um, in this area of Southern Utah, that time of year during the summer, it is very, very dry. So the fire danger there is really high. So you see lots of Smokey the Bear. So um, as we get started, and this one, you guys, this is as much as I would love to say when I come back from a trip. What kind of supplies do you take with you? Um, okay, let me answer that one. Um, remind me of that one, Sam. As much as I, because I'll, I'll actually change what I was about to say right there. As much as I would like to do all of my documenting on the trip, or as much as I would like to get all of my documenting done as soon as I get home, that is just not realistic. Um, I'm getting a lot more done on my next project that I will show you because we are home right now. Um, if I was doing, um, if I was planning on documenting while I was on a trip, the things I would take with me, and I would keep it very limited, I would take um, a few stamps, I would take a black pen, I would take some washi, I would take some adhesive, I would take some scissors. You take that on every single trip we go on? 
If I'm do if I'm gonna document while well, I'm you document every trip we go on, basically, mom. Huh? <laughs> okay. Anyhow, those are the things that I would take, and those would that would kind of be my basic toolkit. Um, the more in that case that you take with you is not necessarily the better, because then you end up with a wagon behind you carrying all your supplies. Um, if you can limit yourself to what you take, you can always add more when you get back, but if you can limit yourself, I think you'll be able to spend a lot more time documenting while you're on the trip versus trying to figure out what kind of products that you want to document with. All right, so here, I hope you guys can't hear that. Um, we're still in a new development and there's a ton of construction going on even today, so big trucks are rumbling by. Um, anyhow. So when I start documenting, I document all the things. Um, this was a picture of the back of the car and the coolers that we had and all of our gear. So that's part of the story. Your story is your story. You decide what you wanna document. Just as when I'm traveling, I take all the things that we looked at in the bag, I also take all the photos. Because you never know as you're sitting down and you start documenting what photo that you might want to tell. And this, I had just happened to take the photo and I thought, you know what, this would actually be a really great way to start out documenting this trip is here we go, the car's packed, we're ready to roll. A um, few more stickers. I love using library cards and library pocket cards in my traveler's notebooks because it's a great way to add some journaling and tuck those away. Um, I have those on my website. As we get started, you're gonna see I haven't made it very far. I have um, photos of the drive. We stopped a lot. We stopped a lot at the side of the road and took pictures of cows that were also at the side of the road and flowers and different things. Um, this now is where I kind of stopped, but I didn't stop mentally. I stopped doing the documenting part because I haven't had time to circle back. But let me show you kind of how I've addressed that. The first thing is, Someone asked a minute ago about whether I use washi to do tip-ins. This is what that person was referring to. This is called a tip-in. This is a way that I can very easily add additional things to my traveler's notebook because it's already bound or stitched or stapled or whatever. It's not like I can open the rings and add more things. So this is a great way that I can add something without it hearing it down to um, the insert itself. And in this case, this was a postcard that I um, picked up on the trip. I just took washi, adhered it half on the postcard, half on the insert. The back side, half on the postcard, half on the insert. One of the things that's really fun, especially if you're documenting a trip as you're traveling, if you take a postcard and you fill it out while you're on the trip and actually mail it back to yourself, that can be really fun because it would have a stamp from where you are. It also would have the postmark from where you are, and then you can add that. So from here, even though I had not continued necessarily gluing things down and journaling, this is where sticky notes, you guys, come in handy. And I have sticky notes, sticky notes, sticky notes galore. I have sticky notes that are large, sticky notes that are sticky small. Sticky notes for days. Sticky notes for days. Now, one of the things, if you watched the first video that I cautioned you against was using sticky, sticky notes to do all of your documenting. And um, the reason for that is then you end up with tons of these and now they're no longer notes, um, but they kind of get lost. And, you know, if, if you watched it, you know what I'm saying. But the one place where I think, I think personally, um, it is good to use sticky notes is something like this. When I sat down and started figuring out what is it that I want to document about this trip while the trip was still fresh in my head, I had planned, oh, this is a photo that I printed. This was an old kind of gas station garage. I want that to go here and I put it right here and that is my little sticky note about what I wanted to put there. Um, these are photos that I have all ready to go to document, so they are in the next page. Here's a little tip if you're traveling to the national parks in the United States. Oh. And I don't know um, if this happens in other places, but I will tell you this is how it works in the US. Um, all of the national parks in their visitor centers have stamps. So I'm gonna pull this up close and you can see that. Um, that stamp tells me that it's Bryce Canyon National Park and there was a roller date stamp that was part of that stamp. So there you can see that was July 15, 2019. I knew ahead of time that I wanted to document that trip. So I actually took 
my insert in the, in the visitor center with me because I knew that they would have stamps like that and um, I stamped. Now, if you find yourself on a trip like this where you wanna stamp something, there are, um, there are a number of different stores too that have stamps out for you to use. And if you find yourself at that store and you don't have an insert with you, but you know you want a document, um, grab a paper bag or grab a piece of um, paper or something like that. That is what um, I did here just to show you when I was there. So on the bag, I also printed that exact same stamp. So you don't necessarily have to worry if you don't have your insert with you or your scrap of paper or whatever it is you're doing. I even on the back side of that did a whole bunch of them because if I wanted, I could use this in my memory keeping or on the, I could use the whole bag or on the back side, I could come in and cut some of those little stamps out. All right, and I just keep going here. I have a sticker that I'm going to put in there. I have a photo of a receipt. This is the receipt or a photo of the receipt, the entrance fee for that national park. And what's kind of fun about this, you guys, so, it immediately tells me where I am, that is the national park. It tells me the date, and it also tells me how much it costs to get in. Now that is kind of like taking a picture of your grocery store receipt, or taking a picture of um, when you go to get gas, the price of gas. Um, that is kind of a neat thing to compare over the years. So um, I've done that in the past too. Maybe um, you're traveling and you're in Europe and gas is really expensive. So you wanna take a picture of that. But this is kind of a fun way to memory keep. Now, the reason I still have the receipt, but I recommend in something like this, if you want to memory keep or scrapbook your receipt, that you take a picture of it. Because a lot of those receipts, and this happens also with your, um, if you have your tickets to get on the airplane, if you still use paper tickets, um, they are printed using, um, they're printed on thermal paper with thermal, thermal ink? They're printed on thermal paper and um, those will fade over time. So if you have a photo of that, your receipt may fade, but that, your photo is not going to fade. So um, more sticky notes, things I've done. I even sometimes will do something like this. Oh, this is a layout that I really like and this one, um, I even wrote the name of the person down um, that, um, whose format it was so I could remember. Um, anyhow, so that is as far as I have gotten in that particular project, but it is all ready to roll and um, when I'm ready to come back to it, I will come back to it. It's also super cute. It's Sam, thanks Sammy. Sammy says it's also super cute. Okay, they heard it okay. well I never know if they can hear or not. Um, all right, you guys, so now what we're going to do we are, um, we're gonna talk about a project that I am currently working on. Um, and then we're gonna spend some time talking about photos and um, the different printers that I use to print photos, the different apps that I use to print photos and some things like that. Um, okay, so the project that I am working on right now, and I think I've mentioned this um, in the last three videos as well, um, really quickly, if you missed any of those videos, um, one, two, or three, you'll also find them in the description of this particular video. Okay, so I am documenting this whole coronavirus, COVID-19 um, mumbo jumbo world that we are finding ourselves in right now, right? Um, and I document this in a very particular style to me. Um, I know a lot of people are documenting out there and everybody has a different approach to how they are doing this. As we're going through, um, I have used a number of different printables that are out there. Some I have paid for, some are free. I have included those in the description of the video, links to the description of the video. A friend of mine that I've known for years, Tracy Reed, she did an amazing blog post on her website where she has and has continued to and will continue to um, list, provide a full list with links of all of the free, um, uh, free resources that she has found out there related to documenting the coronavirus. So I've included that link as well. As we take a look at this project, 
That reminds me, my fingernails. You know what's so funny? This is gonna be a total squirrel moment, you guys. Um, if only my fingernails and my hair would grow as fast as they seem to be growing during the coronavirus, right? Isn't it crazy? Um, I have, I'm trying a new product on my nails that I should have later this week. So hopefully next weekend, you won't see my totally grown out nails. Anyhow, I've said it before, I'll say it again. First world problems, right? I do realize that. Um, so as we are documenting, oh, I know, I was talking about the free resources. So Tracy Reed, I've included a link um, to her particular blog post on her website in the description as well. So here I have used one of Allie Edwards' free um, free pieces of artwork to do the COVID-19, and then I just added a little, um, a little red cross there. Um, I will be doing a blog post for Scrapbook and Cards Today magazine on Tuesday. That will be live this coming Tuesday. That is April 14th. I should probably say the year, 2020. Um, I will come back after that is posted, and I will also include a link to that in the description of the video. So I will spend um, time on that blog post. I will also be doing, as part of that blog post, a video specifically to this um, project and how I kind of approached it. But let's jump in. I'll just show you what I did. Um, different word art. This one comes from Carrie Bradford. That was a free one as well. When I document, when I sit down and approach a project like this, for me, I want it to be a mixture of kind of what's happening in the world um, with fact and then what's happening in my world. So I will use photos that I pull from the internet. Um, I found this one. I went and searched coronavirus. This is something that, you know, I think most of us have seen, but I found that and then I print that. Yes. What are you using on your nails, Mom? What am I using on my nails? What am I using right now or what will I be using? Answer both. Oh, good question. Okay. Um, so I, um, these are gel. Um, I go to a salon and someone does those. The, that is um, DND 601. I think it's called Bally Slipper. I am going to try red aspen nails. And so I need to get the gel off and then the red aspen are those um, pre um, press ons. So I will let you know. Um, I'll just kind of mention how that goes in the next video. Um, we're going to talk about printing the photos and how I print the photos and where I print the photos. That is what we will kind of wrap up with. That will be the last, you know, probably third of the class today. So um, this one, that is word art again from Allie Edwards. So I've done a little bit of, this is what the coronavirus is. I've defined it here. These things that you see right here, these timelines, these are an amazing free resource from Persnickety Prints. I have linked Persnickety Prints in the description of the video. We will talk about Persnickety Prints a little bit more um, when we start talking about printing your photos. But they have done a timeline. This is a free download um, for January, February, and March. And they have said they will continue to do the timelines as long as we are in this. This is also from um, one of their free downloads. So um, link to those is included in the description of the video. So um, I started about mid-March is when I started documenting. So I jumped from February timeline right into there. And as I go, you can see I have moved from telling the story from kind of the world perspective and what is going on with the coronavirus to telling my own story and how the calendar was blank starting, um, you know, March 16th. Then I move into the earthquake that we had in Utah that happened on March 18th. So that really has nothing to do with the coronavirus, right? But in my world, this was all happening at the same time, so I wanted to document that. Um, this right here is a template. This, um, remember this. I downloaded this from In a Creative Bubble. This is something that um, is available for purchase. Again, I have no affiliation to that company. It's just something that I like to use. Um, I'll just show you those really quick. This is some of the, this is my file folder where I keep some of the things I printed, but um, that particular download has all of these great templates that are sized for documenting in a traveler's notebook. Um, one of the things that I will mention, you can kind of see these little light gray lines right here. Um, these are size 8.25, which is the size of a standard size traveler's notebook but they are sized at four, I think 4.33 or 4.25. They are sized for the standard 
um, width and I use a standard wide. So I actually just cut mine a little bit larger. That's just kind of a, a, a little side note there. Anyhow, I'm using a lot of those. A uh, bucket list I did um, when I did a Facebook Live for Scrapbooking Cards Today. If any of you saw that, you saw me do that entirely upside down and backwards, which that was fun. Well, that's um, why I'm here. Yeah, yes, and that's why Sam is now here to help me make sure things aren't upside down and backwards. Although I think I have it now after the second live that we've done. Where do you find in Persnickety Print? Um, so I have, if you, um, the description in the video, I've added two links to Persnickety Prints. One is to Persnickety Prints in general. The second link that you see there takes you directly to download um, those, those timelines. Okay, so now here, there are places in my, um, in my documenting journey here that I am circling back to. Um, someone had asked earlier, do I always scrapbook or memory keep in chronological order? I don't. If I do, this one would already be done. We wouldn't be seeing my sticky note here. But as I have kind of have been working my way through the book, I knew kind of time-wise, this, this is what I want to document here. This over here on this side is another um, freebie from Carrie Bradford. Um, this is all part of um, this is all part of the documenting kind of what's going on in the coronavirus. This was the first free class that we did, you guys. Um, so I wanted to document that as well. This stamp right here. Anytime I do anything with this stamp, I can't tell you how many questions I get about this stamp. Um, this stamp is made by Fiskars, and it is part of a set that is called. Um, hip clips. They do not make this anymore, you guys. I have looked and looked and looked and looked and looked and looked and looked. Now, you may notice that I have two here, and you may notice that they are brand new. Um, I have not used these. After getting asked the question again, after the last video, I probably spent, I don't know, maybe two hours scouring the internet to try to find these, and I found two. I am going to give these away. I am going to give these away later this week on Instagram. So if you are not following me on Instagram, it's Lael Concar. So write yourself a little note if you're taking notes in your traveler's notebooks. If you want the chance to win um, one of these stamps, then make sure to follow me on Instagram. So that little stamp is that little clipboard. And uh, I love you, that. When you download and print things out, what pound of paper do you use for downloads? Right, um, so the question is when I download and print things out, so when I am downloading these things, what um, weight paper do I use? Um, I use, it is from Michaels, and it's the eight and a half by 11 paper, that's the Recollections brand, and it's white, and I use that just because generally um, they're always on sale or they go on sale quite a bit. Um, I don't know offhand what the weight of that paper is, I will come back after the video. Mom, where is said paper? What? Where, where, um, where would it be? I, I'm not sure, Sammy, but it's not going to have the wrapper on it. So I'm just going to make myself a little note on the sticky note. So we need to know the Michaels Recollections paper weight. Um, I know that some of you on the video um, do the same thing. So if you want to pipe in, um, please do. Instagram link and supplies not working. Uh, all right, um, I'll go back and double check that. I forgot that I had added that. So, um, oh, look at Sammy. Is it this? That is it, yep. So what does it say? It's 110 pound. You guys, little Sam just Googled it. Oh, not little Sam, Sam's six feet tall and he's 19 I'm years old. Six one, well. Oh, he's six one, okay. Um, anyway, that is 110 pound cardstock that I use and I will link that. So, um, the, uh, da -da 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 -da. um, oh, um, Teresa, you know what? Don't worry. If you don't have any friends to tag, it's okay. Don't worry. Um, okay. So where were we? Oh yes, this stamp. So, um, I love to use that stamp because to me it looks like a fun clipboard and that's a great way to do some of your journaling. We're going to talk very quick, um, very shortly about all the different photos and how we're doing the photos. Then I move again to this is Lael's world. This is kind of the world world. 
and I am grabbing photos from the internet. I'm using um, in a creative bubble template there that for the record that I had printed out and there the um, Allie Edwards um, word art again. And then again, using stickies as I work my way through of things that I wanna add. This, um, I talked about this one I think a little bit last time. Um, Sam and I sat down and I was playing with watercolors and then Sam, that was Sam's artwork. And I wanted to include that too. So I definitely go back and forth between telling my story. This is even telling my husband's story a little bit as he's adjusting to working from home. Um, lots of things. There's the March timeline. This one. So this to me is um, as you start to work your way through my book and as we flip through there. You guys, there's a whole bunch of things going on. There's different colors. There's things that are a lot more stark like that, that are a lot more serious. I've used um, different kinds of fonts. I've used different washi, different mediums, some watercolors. But this really, there's no rhyme or reason to any kind of um, pattern to this other than I'm doing it in a traveler's notebook. And that is how I like to do my memory keeping. Um, if I see a product or a piece of paper that I like and I think, oh, I wanna fussy cut that out, I don't worry that this is not all serious about um, the, you know, kind of following that whole seriousness of the coronavirus. This is how I want to document. So that's how I've done it. And to me, this is more of a regular just spread. This I took of Sam and Sam is my helper. You guys all know Sam now um, as he's home from college with the rest of us. Um, this is a photo I took of him. I think this was last Saturday after we after right. we did the video. Anyhow, um, he's uh, a new link for your Instagram is on now. Okay, thank you, sweetie. Um, Sam just went in and up updated the Instagram link in the description of the video, so that is now clickable. Um, you should be able to um, follow Ho me from hopefully. there. Hopefully, yes. Hopefully, and if not, we'll fix it. Oh yes. Okay. okay. So um, I shared this kind of a sneak peek of this yesterday in, um, on Instagram and on Facebook. Because this is a die, and this stamp is from, uh, excuse me, not stamp, the die is from the stamp market. I carry these on my website. I have um, linked to that in the video. But you guys, this, and I don't, you guys, I'm not a huge die person. I really don't use dies. It's just not um, anything that's ever really been my style. But when I saw this particular die, I thought, oh my gosh, I, I love it. Anyhow, that's what I've done. I've used my, um, oh my gosh, cuddle bug, I think. I don't even know what it is because that's how, um, that's how much I don't use dies. I pulled it out and dusted it off. Um, but I made that, um, this, little, this little spread about Sam. Um, Sweet Sam is, as many of the kind of teenagers are struggling. I mean, we're all struggling with the whole coronavirus, but... He's definitely struggling. Okay. Um, he's definitely struggling because he's a social kid and his whole world's been turned upside down. He left college and he's now home again and now he's dealing with, you know, mom and dad and, and um, you know, anyhow. So I just did a little journaling about that. So you can even, when you're doing your memory keeping, tell your stories from other people's perspectives. I've even had, and I do this a lot in my December Daily albums, I'll have my kids and sometimes my husband, if I can bribe him to do it, I'll even them have, have them do some of the writing or some of the journaling and then add it because then you really get their perspective. Um, more, we're spending a lot of time outside. Another one of the in a creative bubble templates. So all different formats, you guys, um, no rhyme or reason. Again, there are no rules. In my book, there are no rules. Um, well, I try to spell things correctly. That's kind of a rule, but if that doesn't happen, then oh well. Um, this one you guys may recognize if you took, um, if you watched last week's class, week three, this was as we did the lists and um, another, and I, you guys look at, I move right from happy, seeing the good and staying home to this, which this was April 5th. This was the confirmed cases and the number of deaths. That's pretty sobering, but you know what? For me, this is something that I wanna make sure to document because this is all part of the story. And then we keep going, the other list that I did about the what we're watching. And um, this one too, I did this one yesterday. I'm talking about the different people that we are seeing in the news. 
Um, I just went to Google, found pictures of them, and then kind of found their bios and wrote a little bit about two people that um, are very much in the news as we see the coverage um, on the coronavirus on the TV. And then this guy, this was the last list that we did, the things you remember. All right, you guys, here's something about documenting in a traveler's notebook. And if you are using an insert that is um, either stitched or stapled, there really is no way to get around this. And for me, this is part of it, and it's just the way that it is. The more that you add, the wider or chunkier the book gets, right? The, so I have pages that are sticking out. And that's just what's going to happen. The more I add in here, they have to go somewhere. So they're sticking out. As you can see at the top, um, things are starting to move. And as they move, this particular insert that I'm using, it is not stitched. I probably would not have the problem if it was stitched, um, but I may, depending on how full it was getting. Um, let's see if you can see this or not. Um, because it's gotten so thick, the staples, the center, um, probably the six center pages maybe, in my particular insert, have come out, meaning that they are no longer um, stapled because there's just so much strain. And I'm continuing to add to this. So what I do is I take scotch tape. Now, I have used scotch tape, and you can see it a little bit right there, um, to help keep those things together. Their um, regular scotch tape is not acid free. There is scotch tape that is acid free and I, um, I have added it to my cart. I, um, it's available on Amazon. I haven't tried it before. I'm trying to see what other ones I have here that are better. Um, there's another one. You can't really see it, um, but probably what's going to happen one day because I have not used acid free scotch tape on, um, as I'm kind of re-adhering things in here, um, I'm probably gonna get a little bit of yellowing. And you know what, for me, that's okay. But acid-free scotch tape, I have it on order and I'm going to use it and, and we'll do a comparison probably in week six and I'll show you um, what that's like. So Sam has um, deserted me for a minute, you guys, because I am looking at do, 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 yes, um, stamp market is amazing, I agree. I'm looking to see if I have um, da, 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 any, more, any more comments that I missed or questions. Okay, I think I'm okay. All right, so that is um, where I am on this. I will end up, you guys, having more than one of these because I will keep documenting. Um, a little public service announcement. Generally, I don't use white on the cover. Um, of anything. The reason for that is I'm continually working. I'm using watercolors. I'm using ink. Um, this cover is actually the second one that I put on. I put this on this morning because I'm going to just peel this off a little bit. If you want to use white on the cover of your traveler's notebook, I recommend that you wait until you are done. Oh, disregard that. But see how that's dirty. It's just what's happened. You've kind of got smudges and spots and all different kinds of things. So if you wanna use white, I say wait until you're done documenting that entire insert and then come back and put your cover on. So that's my temporary cover. I'll probably um, even come back when I'm completely done and um, do one final just so it doesn't get all yucky. Okay, let's talk photos, you guys. Let's talk photos and printers. Um, okay, we're, oh, we're a little bit over an hour. All right. Um, photos and printers. So let's talk about the different ways that we can print and um, the different printers might we might be using depending on where we are. Um, I'm gonna look at my little notes here real quick. Okay, so um, first of all, not everybody has a printer at home. Not everybody wants to print their own photos. Again, you do you, no right or wrong. So you may be printing photos elsewhere outside of where you live. You may be printing photos at Walgreens, you may be printing photos at Costco, you may be printing photos at Persnickety Prints. Um, I would highly encourage you to go check out Persnickety Prints. Um, I have included a link to them in the description of the video as well. Not affiliated with Persnickety Prints at all. Um, I know Shar Shari, um, the owner of Persnickety Prints, that is a local Utah company. Um, it is small business, woman run and owned, um, Shari owns it. 
Um, they do amazing things with their prints. Um, they, and I, you guys, I had to write this down um, just so I could get it right. They have an in-house photo lab. They convert your digital. So when you upload your digital photos, they convert them to, um, they convert them and process them like it's film. They do it in a dark room. So um, why that's important, you get, um, the image is embedded in silver halide paper. See, I have no idea what I'm talking about. But why this is important is because um, you there's no ink. The way that process is done, there's no ink. You get no scratching, water resistant, and good for 100 plus years. So um, again, however you print your photos, there's no right or wrong way, but I do encourage you to go check out Persnickety Prints. So in that case, you are sending them off. So that one now we're gonna set aside. We're gonna talk about if you are printing at home or if you are printing on the go. The photo printer that I use when I am printing at home is the Sky. This is the Epson Picture Mate 400. Make sure you can see that. Um, this is a, it's fairly portable. I mean, I have traveled with this. If I um, go to a retreat or something like that, I can take this with me. This is, um, about six inches wide by uh, three inches tall by, I'm gonna say that's probably nine inches. So um, you can definitely take it with you. Uh, prints three sizes. It prints five by seven, it prints four by six, and it prints three and a half by five. I have linked to this in the description of the video. Um, doesn't matter where you purchase it, but I've linked it to Amazon because um, then that way you know exactly what it is that I'm talking about. This is um, what I use. I'm going to say probably I print 99% of my photos from that. And you guys, I have tried all different kinds of things. Um, I have a Canon IP8700 that prints wide format. So it does, you know, up to 13 by 19, I believe. Um, I don't use that one anymore. I have a Canon selfie. I don't use that one anymore. I prefer that Epson Picture Mate just because the quality is amazing. So um, let's talk about what it does. I generally am using either a four by six or five by seven. I've linked to the, um, the photo paper that I use in the description as well. Um, there are a couple of ways that you can print your photos through the printer. Um, if you use Photoshop or something like that, you can edit your photos in there and print from there and that's all good, but that's a little bit more advanced for some people. Um, they have a free app and that is called the Epson Creative Print. You guys, that one is a gem if you use this printer because it basically um, gives you a lot of the functionality that you would have in Photoshop when it comes to um, resizing your photos and deciding how you want to print those photos. So um, in both cases of the things I'm going to show you, I have printed um, on the Epson. So I've used a couple of different apps on, the, on these photos right here. Let's start here. Um, I have used an app called Project Life. And I put a video together last year that walks you through step-by-step. Step. Project Life is a free app and it will walk you through how to basically take this, which would be our canvas, right? That is four by six, a four by six canvas and get two three by fours, get six two by twos. There are a lot of different, um, a lot of different formats for different size photos that you can make using that Project Life app. So super easy, um, I've linked to that, um, that video in the description of this video where I walk you through with my phone showing you exactly what to do. Is there a question, Sammy? What is the most, best place to order ink and paper for an Epson printer? Okay, what is the best place to order ink and paper from the Epson printer? Um, you guys, I have linked to Amazon. I am a big Amazon shopper. Um, Sometimes it is the same price, sometimes it's lower, sometimes it's more expensive. Um, convenience for me and that in normal circumstances, two day turnaround time at the most, 
um, generally, that's where I like to order mine. Now, um, if you Google, you could find it probably on Best Buy. Um, I know there are like, I think B&H Photography is another site. It just, it just depends. But um, for me, it's all about convenience. So that's where um, I order those things is on Amazon. And I linked those to the description in the video. So um, in this particular case, I wanted two three by four photos. And all I did was open up that Project Life app and it walks you through picking the format that um, that you want. In this case, using my four by six as a canvas, I'm always in that app using four by six as a canvas. At least that's what I do. I don't know if there's other options, but basically I pick the format that would look like, oh, that's not gonna work. That would look like this. On the screen, that's the one I would pick because that's how I would get two three by fours. And then in my camera roll, I would um, find the photos that I wanted to put there and I would drag that photo to there and that photo to there. And then I save it. So really, I am still working with that four by six canvas, but I have put two three by fours on a four by six. Now, regardless of how I'm printing or where I'm printing, whether I'm printing at home, whether I am printing um, at Walgreens or Costco or Persnickety or wherever I'm printing, as far as that um, printer is concerned, I'm printing a four by six. It's just I have told it, look at what you're printing here is actually two three by fours that I'm going to cut after it's printed. So this um, that we're seeing here, um, until I tell you differently, everything here is printed um, using that Epson. So once that prints out, then I just take out my little trimmer and then I have my two three by fours, okay? So that's one of my options. And a lot of times, especially when we're doing our documenting, our memory keeping in a traveler's notebook, I am using smaller photos, except for that one, and we'll talk about that one in a sec. But I'm using smaller photos because I have a smaller surface area. So I wanna play with the sizes of my photos a little bit. All right, the next one, same thing I can do in Project Life. In this case, I wanted two by two photos. And so with the two by two photos, exact same thing that we did, right? Where did it go? Oh, right here. Basically the exact same thing, except, well, really what I told it here was, that would be the template that I picked in that Project Life app. And then I find my photos and I just drag them in and then I get this. I still saved it as a four by six, printed it out as a four by six, but when I am ready to cut it apart, I now have six two by twos. And that is what I see there. And that is exactly what I did um, on this little guy, on this list that we did um, in last week's video, the different things I'm watching, all right? so. Um, those all printed on my Epson. Now, one of the biggest questions I get when we are um, memory keeping in a traveler's notebook is how do we get a photo like this that do prints you use that bit? Do you phone for photos or do you have a separate camera that you use still? Uh, Teresa, good question. Do you only use your phone for photos or do you have a separate camera? I have a separate camera that I never use. Literally never, ever, ever. It's a wonderful, amazing, expensive Nikon digital SLR camera, and it never, ever, ever comes out of the bag anymore. Um, the last time I used it was when um, the boys were playing sports in high school, and the only reason I used it then was because I had my telephoto lens and I could, I could do um, sports action photos from far away and still have them up close. So I don't ever, ever, ever use that. Um, I am always using my phone. And depending on whether you have an Android or an iPhone, I use an iPhone, but I think in both cases, the, the camera technology is unbelievable, like off the hook. Um, in a lot of cases, I'm just taking the photos directly from the camera and I don't even have to edit them. And a lot of that depends on lighting and things, but even the beauty of that, if you do have to edit, you can edit right from within um, the, um, the camera app or the photography app on, on the phone. All right, so something like this, you guys, the, the width of this standard wide insert that I'm using is five, right? Does that sound kind of something familiar? Five. This Epson printer prints five by seven, but this is taller than five, right? So how do I make that work? Um, 
there is an amazing video that Kathy Zulski did. Um, and it is a step-by-step -step video that walks you through how to do this using that Epson printer. And it's very, very easy. So I have linked to that video that Kathy did that in the description of this video as well. So it is definitely designed for how to do that with the Epson, um, the Epson 400, that picture mate that I've shown you. So um, if you don't have that printer, um, you could do, well, if you use really kind of Photoshop and print your own photos, you may be able to do something like that with persnickety prints. I don't know. Um, I'm not familiar enough with um, their app and their website to know if they have a size that works for that. But that's something that I will, um, that's something that I'll research. I will add that to my list and we can talk about that. Um, we can talk about that. You guys, I really should have my traveler's notebook out where I have all my to do's, but um, right now it's not going to happen because it's across the room. So persnickety prints and TN size picks. Okay. All right. Um, yes. Yeah, so here it is. That is, um, and that is, so I, I, in my phone, I changed the photo. It was color. I changed it to black and white and I just sharpened it up a bit. And that is what came out of this printer, you guys. So the printer, it's, it, um, the quality is amazing. It's very nice. All right. So, um, that was taught. We talked there about the Project Life app and how to do um, these things. And incidentally, Project Life app, you can do, um, regardless, I can't remember if I said this or not, regardless of where you're printing your photos, if you're uploading them somewhere, you can still use that app. Um, once you get um, this little thing set up, you save it to your camera roll. And then as far as your phone is concerned and the printer is concerned, that's a four by six. So you can use that app for anything. All right. So those photos... Project Life app. When we get to this stack of photos right here, this stack of photos I printed using that, um, what was it called again? I made a note of it. Epson Creative Print. Um, that free app that you can download. You don't even have to have the printer. You can still download it. I just don't know if you can print, um, I don't know if you can print the photos, like if you can save the photos once you do this um, in to your camera roll. That is something I'll also find out. Um, so I use sometimes Project Life and, and more and more though, I'm using this app that, um, that I use with the printer. Some people will also use an app called Stitch Fix. So Stitch Fix, um, in, in my world, I think it's a little bit more I'm not going to say complicated. There's just a few more steps involved. So you could certainly look at, um, no, not Stitch Fix. Oh my gosh, Stitch Fix is the, is the box clothing place. Pick Stitch. <laughs> Pick Stitch. I will add um, a link to Pick Stitch in the description of the video. Anyhow, that's a free app that you can use on your phone that kind of helps you to um, resize your photos uh, for canvases like this. Okay, so using that app, the Epson Creative Print, I made all of these. So to start out with, this is just a, um, that's just a regular old four by six. When I am printing a four by six out of the Epson Picture Mate, I have the option to choose whether I want it to be borderless. Um, let me put this on something so you can really see that it's borderless. You can have it be borderless. So it prints all the way to the edges, no border. Or you can have it print with a border. And that is um, just part of the printer. You choose in the printer dialog box if you want borderless or border. So I know lots of us like to have a white border. I like to have a white border and that will do it for you. You just pick borderless or border. Um, the next one, so that those are four by sixes. These are five by sevens. Again, borderless and border. That is Sam when we're making, uh, when we're making current Corona. We're making granola. Yeah, we're, we're, making, make granola. we're making beer in the kitchen with granola stuff, you know. Beer? Where did that come from, Sam? Well, oh, you corona. Said corona. Okay, I meant coronavirus, Sam, 19 year old Sam, who shouldn't be talking about Corona. I'm talking about the virus, though. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. As, Anyhow. as in the words of Sean White, it's just Mountain Dew, baby. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, you guys, you're getting Sam humor along with Lael humor. Okay, anyhow, um, those were four by sixes and five by sevens. Um, this one, 
was another one that I did. So this has more of a border. I could uh, use it that way if I wanted, or I could trim it down if I wanted to have a, a smaller. 1123. Okay. Thanks, Amy. Um, that one, and this will go on my coronavirus. Um, I did not have a lot of hand sanitizer, I thought, until I started going around, going through all of my old purses. Um, not old purses, but my purses that I had used in the past. When I travel a lot, I would always have hand sanitizer with me. So that'll kind of be a fun little um, photo and story to tell about washing hands in um, my coronavirus journal. Okay, so let's take a look at these. This guy, this is printed with, um, or set up actually, I should say, with that Epson Creative print, had little boxes there like that, little rectangles. So I thought, ooh, that would be fun. All I did was um, click the screen on that template and search my camera roll for the photos I wanted to add, put them in, and then printed that. So that is what I did to, oh, right here. That is what I did right here, okay? There are the three photos. And you guys, there are 62, I think I counted, 62 different templates um, that, that they have in that Epson Creative Print app. This is a fun thing, and I just was playing with this this morning. So um, on one of their templates, this was one of their templates, I could pull in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 photos into that one template. So look at, I have all those teeny tiny little photos. Those are one and a half by one and a half, and that's just what the template was. What is nice about this template, see all those white, see all of those white, see all of that white, basically all of those white borders, that was part of the template. So the template had the white borders built in for me. So when I go to trim this, I automatically have white borders around all of those little squares. And then I thought, well, that's fun, not the five by seven, but what if I don't want to print a five by seven? What if I want to print a four by six because I only have four by six paper? All I had to do was tell it I'm using four by six paper in, or you know, photo paper instead of the five by seven. So even smaller. Now what's fun about this, I could cut all these up, but you guys, that is a four by six. If I wanted, I could take that just as it is and that could go right there. I could have that collage and then do um, my journaling right below. So um, fun options with that. Again, that one had 62 different, I think 62 different formats that you could pick and pull from. Okay, so um, that is printing at home. We're gonna wrap up with the last few minutes. We are going to do um, talk about printing on the go and some different options for printing on the go. Any questions, Sammy, you know, Sam has his phone in his hand and he's playing a game. So if you've been asking questions, pick frame is free too, perfect. Um, da -da -da. Oh, I see somebody said something about um, a printer being great, but not a true four by six. And that is probably the Canon Selfie, which is something that is um, just to realize for whatever reason, the Canon Selfie, yeah, is not a true four by six. It's a, a little bit shorter. Um, what is the Epson app call, called? It is called the Epson Creative Print. And you should be able to download that, um, whether it's Android or, um, Android or um, Apple, iPhone. A great Corona. Okay. All right, friends. So now let's talk about um, printing photos on the go. And I have a couple of different printers here. These are all printers that I use when, for one thing or another. All right. And we're going to start with this guy. And then we're going to go to this guy. And then we're going to go, well, not that guy. Um, so I have the same photo. This is the same exact photo printed from three different places. One of the biggest questions when we start, I don't wanna do that because this is gonna be confusing. We'll put this one here and we'll put this one here and then we'll put this one here. Um, one of the biggest questions when we start talking about pocket printers and those are the things that you say here, see here and even to some extent this little guy. These are pocket printers. Um, they actually print photos out of them. So this little guy is the LG Popo. It prints the photo from right there. 
This little guy is the Polaroid Mint. It prints the photo from right there. These are both pocket printers. They're called pocket printers because, um, well, they could fit in your pocket. So there's my hand, average normal size hand, not big or small. There is that um, Polaroid Mint printer. So you can see, oh, you know what's funny? I have really dark jeans on. Um, this is the only time, guys, I only put jeans on. I only put pants on. Well, I put you yoga pants on otherwise. No, it's okay. Um, <laughs> really the only time I put makeup on or the only time I fix my hair or the only time I put jeans on is um, on Saturdays when I'm doing these. Anyhow, um, regardless of how many times I've washed these jeans, they are dark, 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 and my hands look, are looking blue, blue, blue. I promise you my blood oxygen level is okay. Anyhow, Polaroid she's not, Mint. She's not wearing anything tight on her arm. Yeah, okay. Anyhow, um, Polaroid Mint fits in this palm of my hand. Well, not palm, but you can see how big it is. And then that would fit in my back pocket. I could really put that in my back pocket and have that with me. That's the Polaroid Mint. This is the LG Popo, similar size. So these both work exactly the same way. Um, there is an app and the app is specific to the device. So if it's the Polaroid Mint, you download, download, you download the app for the Polaroid Mint, you open that up and you pick what photo you wanna print and you print it from that app on your phone. So this, um, both of these devices are Bluetooth enabled. So your phone uh, talks to the devices through Bluetooth. Uh, super, super easy to set up, super, super easy. So I have taken the exact same photo on my camera roll and I have printed them out. So this is the one that is printed with the LG. Um, actually, I should probably start with this one. This is the one I printed with the Epson Picture Mate. This is definitely the most true to color. Move it up a little bit there. You can see how vibrant the red is. You can see the orange on Sam, Sam's hat. Um, so very, very, very vibrant. And that is using the Epson Picture Mate. The next one I printed is from the LG Popo. Now look at that. Look at how um, muddy that starts to get, right? Um, and there's nothing wrong with this printer. Nothing wrong at all. It's just that this is portable. There is no way that this little printer can do what this printer does. Um, I just touched the Epson picture mate. Both of these little pocket printers, um, and I think it's actually as far as I know, every pocket printer that's out there uses the exact um, same oops, technology. It's no ink, it's called Zero Ink, Zinc, Z-I-N-K. These are the little papers. There is no ink in that printer. See, no place for ink. The ink is built into the paper. Um, so you kind of get what you get and the technology for that, the fact that really it can even do that is pretty amazing. Um, so that's what I get when I print using that little LG Popo. Then we move to the Polaroid Mint and this is what I get when I print with the Polaroid Mint. So see the difference in the LG and the Mint, the exact same photo straight out of my camera, no editing. Um, and they're just different devices, just as if I had here, if I had my Epson Picture Mate and I had another desktop printer, um, I would probably see a variation in the color and that's just um, what it is. So I prefer the Mint um, because it's just more vibrant. Now, with both of those apps, I can edit the, the photos within the app itself, or obviously I can edit the photo um, from my phone in the camera part of the, the phone in the app um, or any other app. That's any other photo editing app in the phone um, and then print from there. So, and then this was the guy. So as we look at all three together, see if I can figure out how to do this. We can do, look at all three together. So LG, Polaroid Mint, and the Epson Picture Mate. So there are the three. Um, the benefit, obviously, with these little pocket printers you can literally take those with you anywhere. You can put them in your back pocket. The picture may not as easy to take with you. Um, so the convenience that you get for having that with you on the go, in some cases is going to outweigh the need for quality. So um, if I am on a trip, 
So when Vicki and I were on that trip to, um, to Bryce Canyon, I literally could have taken photos and in the hotel that night, I could have had one of my little pocket printers. I could have printed out those little photos and then done my uh, memory keeping right there. So um, obviously what's attractive about that is that um, a lot of us don't have a ton of time to do our memory keeping. So if we can do it right there while we're there, the chances of it getting done are, um, you know, are a lot greater. So different pros and cons for everything. These little guys, um, I think this one is about 60. Um, so fairly inexpensive. I've linked to, um, I think I've linked to both of those, you guys, in the description of the video. Um, the, the printer paper, um, that, that, these little guys. Um, some of them are stickers. Some of them are not. This one is a sticker, so I can literally just peel that off and it's a sticker. And that one is not. And they have different options. Um, those, I think, I figured usually run about, I want to say about 50 cents a print. So not something that you would print all of your photos from. But, you know, in certain situations, those are good. Um, the I guess one downside to this, these are definitely a fixed size. You cannot get that bigger than that size because that is the size of the photo paper. Um you could, I guess, get smaller prints if you wanted because you could, you know, use the little app to put more photos within that. But then you'd be, get, be getting pretty tiny. Um, okay, so those are those guys. Then I think the last one I wanted to mention, and this um, I'm not going to show you because I need my phone to show you. But this is the one I referenced. This is called Life Print. Um, Life Print makes those little pocket printers that are two different sizes. This one prints three and a half by four size photos. And they also have one that is this, you know, similar to this size, but I think prints two by threes. What is different about this printer? Oh, I just remembered something. You guys don't let me forget this. I wanna talk about what I use this for in a sec. I had that out, I wanna show you something. So don't let me forget. Sam, that's your job. What? What, yeah. Um, what, no, what am I supposed to not let you forget? Yeah, exactly, this thing. Don't let me forget that. Okay. Um. Oh, so I'm gonna grab this one back out. Um, in the first video, I talked very briefly about um, using pocket printers. And I showed a video within the video of the this printer in action. So what this printer does, the live print, oh my goodness, I've got the blue all over me now. Um, what this printer does that's different from these, it prints out a photo. Um, this one printed out this little photo of our little kitty that's no longer with us. Um, so I printed that there out of that size photo. But what we have, oh, did you bring it up? Oh, okay, Sam, cool. Um, hang on a second. I will, Sam brought the app up so I can show you. So right here, down in that little corner, it actually has printed a little icon. And it's a barcode. There's data behind that little teeny LP. It's almost like a QR code. Um, so it has embedded data for a video in that photo. What about the HP sp uh, Sprocket printer? So HP Sprocket is going to be very similar to these two. Um, it's just gonna vary in, it's it, the print will vary somewhere between probably that one and that one. But HP Sprocket, just a different brand of, um, you know, of little pocket printers like that. All right, so what we're doing here, let me explain what we're doing. Sam has, we have Sam's phone. And he has pulled up the Life Print app. Life Print. I've, I've linked to that um, printer. So he's pulled up the app. I am going to bring Sam's phone. We're going to hope this works because, you know, sometimes technology. I'm going to bring his phone over this photo. Um, oh, hold on, Sam. You've got it like you want to take a photo. I don't know how to use your app. I know. Okay, hang on, guys. Hang on, hang on. Let me go back. Okay. Um, oh, dang it. Let me figure, let me, let, okay. me, let me play. Yeah. Hang tight, guys. Okay, here we go. No, I don't, I don't Maybe. know if that's that. Uh, what do you have? I don't, I don't know, Mom. No. No, no, no. And you know what? They've changed their I'll interface just, since I, I used it last. Okay. Anyhow, Sam's going to find that. So we're going to put this guy aside. I'm going to talk about this for a second. 
Um, you guys, I wish I remember where I saw this because this to me was like genius when it comes to stamping in your traveler's notebooks. So, um, the book. oh yeah, you here, there you go. Um, okay, so when your book starts to get really full like this, right? Um, and you still want to stamp in it. Now, sometimes if you are, let's say this one. Um, sometimes if I have taken a piece of cardstock and I want to adhere it to, um, okay, let me back up. In this case, I had done some watercolor and I knew I needed to use watercolor paper because um, the, the, the paper of the insert would not take the watercolor well and it would really, really buckle. So I had a piece of watercolor paper, I did my watercoloring, and then I stamped on that paper and then adhered here. When I'm not doing that, and I still wanna stamp in my traveler's notebook. So for example, for this, this I have stamped directly on the insert. Now, as this gets fuller and fuller, it's probably not going to be very flat here. So the chances of me getting a nice, clean, stamped image when I stamp are probably pretty slim. But I saw someone do this, and this is a um, this is a stamping block that I've had forever from Tim Holtz, and I um, found these on Amazon, and I linked to it on Amazon. But basically, in this package, I think there are six different stamping blocks with the grids. But this one, interestingly enough, is almost the size of Traveler's Notebook insert. So before I did my stamping, I took this, I put it behind the page behind it, and then I did my stamping right there because now I'm not dealing with all the unevenness. I am dealing with that flat surface and then I get a nice, clean, crisp stamp. So I, I wish I could remember who did that. If I can find, I will come back and give that person credit. But I saw it in Instagram and I thought, oh my gosh, that was, that was genius. Sam, did you figure it out? No. No, okay. All right, so um, you guys, the way technology works, sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. So um, we're not gonna spend any more time trying to show you that. I will, um, I mentioned that in uh, the first video. I, um, I take, what are you doing, bud? You're still trying to figure it out? Um, that's gonna drive you, you know what? It's probably not light enough. That's probably why. It's probably too dark in here. Turn on the overhead light. Anyhow, um, after I said we weren't gonna figure it out. Um, okay, so let's, um, Sam, can we, will you help flip the camera? We are going to wrap up. Did we get it? Oh, there's Sammy's hand. I need some powder under all these lights. Stop putting blue stuff all over your face. I have blue stuff on my face? Okay. No. No, okay. All right, you guys. So here's Sammy again. We say thank you to Sammy for helping us. Thank you, thank you. I don't know what I'm going to do when Sam um, eventually goes back to school. Um, he's probably way excited to get back to school one of these days. He's a doll. All right, you guys. So we just spent how much time? Oh my gosh, hour and a half. Minutes. So hour and a half talking about using a traveler's notebook for memory keeping. And you guys, we barely scratched the surface, honestly. Oh, hey, what size of traveler's notebook do you use, Mom? Um, I use a standard. And so um, the first video I did talks a lot about the different sizes. One really quick thing I'll mention about a standard. So um, when you ask about sizes, standard, um, standard, is this size, okay? Standard. It is, um, when we're talking about sizes, we're generally measuring the size of the insert. So, um, the standard inserts are um, 8.25 tall. I have one of the regular standards here. I don't know what, what happened to it. Um, standard inserts are 8.25 tall by um, 4.33 wide. Darn it, that's going to bug me now. Um, eight point, okay, we don't care. Um, 8.25 tall by 4.33 wide. So it is um, skinnier than this. I use the standard wide. So standard wide is 8.25 by five. And I like that extra width. Um, it just gives me a little bit more room to work with. And I do mix. Someone asked, um, a friend of mine, Karen, asked um, on the last, after the last video. Um, so sometimes your notebooks are skinnier than others. Why? And can you mix them? And I do. I mix them in my covers all the time um wide and not wide um okay uh, any other questions that i missed 
If you had a question and I didn't answer it, if I missed it, or if as you're watching, um, if I missed, or if you have a question, um, if you are watching later, leave it in the comments and I um, will go back to your comments and respond. Um, please, please, please remember to like and subscribe. And like, comment. Like, comment, and subscribe, yes. And I guess if you don't like, then you can do thumbs down. But if you don't like and you're still here after 99 if, minutes, if, well, you, if you don't like this really video, want... I will hunt you down. Hey, okay, okay, Sammy. Well, if you dislike the video, okay, I will hunt right, you down. Okay, all right, all yeah. That's Sam being protective of his mama. Um, okay, you guys, what else? Um, oh, don't forget, I'll be doing the giveaway on Instagram later this week. I don't know what day yet. I've got to figure out, look at my calendar. Let's, and let's go with Thursday. No, don't say that. So I need to figure it out. Um, so let's see. No, oh, anyway, just watch. Um, and I will do the giveaway for those. Sam's like, wrap it up, Mom. Wrap it up, wrap it up, wrap it up. Um, so that's video four. Next Saturday. Sam, don't do that. Leave I'm it there. I'm just getting ready, Mom. Oh, Okay. He's like grabbing the phone. I'm not Teenagers. touching the phone, well. Um, next Saturday. Next Saturday, thank 10 you. 10 a.m. No, not. Here. So next Saturday, 9 a.m. Pacific. Um, we will be doing another live video. Next Saturday will be about how to add all different things. Add, add, add. So we'll be making pockets. We'll be making tip-ins. Um, we'll be making a couple of fun things that... Um, Really, it'll kind of take your toddler's notebook up a notch. But in all cases, well, most cases, they're going to be functional too. So they're not just fun, but they'll be functional. So um, I will send out an email next Thursday or Friday um, with the link to the video, as well as um, the few supplies that you'll need if you are going to play along. All right, my friends, deep breaths. Um, thank you so much. Thanks for joining me again. I so look forward to these. Um, and I appreciate it. I know Sam's like, bye bye. He's going to cut me off. He's going to cut me off. Don't cut me off. You have another life to do, Mom, don't you? Oh, no. It's just something I need. It's, it's good. All right. You guys, thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Love you. Bye. Yes, we turn.